Welcome to the Oracle Scroll. My name is Kevin Walder and I am your host and I invite you to join my guests and myself as we discuss all things metaphysical. Welcome to episode 12 of the Oracle Scroll. Today we get acquainted with the Hermit. He's not an easy guy to catch up with, but we have a message from him that will help explain his being in our world. We also are going to talk about compassion. How do we show compassion in our world? We see lots of examples of people who are not showing compassion and not being loving to their neighbor. So how can we break that mold? How can we do something different in our own lives? And then we have a question from Sarah that we will pull some cards to uh, give her some guidance and direction. So today we're going to start off with reading the passage of the Hermit. And this is as I wrote it in, the, um, in my book, The Tarot for Lunch, Lessons from the Cards. So let's just look right straight at the Hermit here. He says, the Hermit is a member of the major arcana family and thus carries a great deal of power in a reading that he may grace. He brings a strong suggestion to engage in some introspection, meditation, and self-examination. The hermit tells us that knowing oneself is key to any forward movement and says that it is time to withdraw from society to gain that insight. The artwork for this card varies from deck to deck, as there are thousands of them out there, and the hermit is usually shown holding a lantern, or sometimes an hourglass. Some of the older versions of the tarot had the hourglass featured. In the Robin Wood deck, he is represented as a solitary, robed figure holding his lantern aloft to, hide his, uh, to light his path through a rugged mountainous terrain, a rugged mountainous trail. I find this image a strong indicator of the guidance we can find from within when we choose to allow our higher self the space and silence within which to function. The lantern represents this enlightened state. The golden tarot of the Renaissance depicts the solitary figure holding an hourglass, as we mentioned earlier. This image indicates the need for us to carve out time for ourselves. Our busy schedules can easily crowd out the indulgence of meditation and introspection. Either way, the hermit is encouraging us to spend time alone and learn to look forward to those hours of solitude and the enlightenment which comes from them. The legacy of the Divine Tarot depicts the hermit as a resolute gentleman holding aloft a crystal-tipped wand. This image is similar to the lantern lighting the way, but also indicates and introduces a bit of magic and a strong connection to Mother Earth through the crystal. The wilderness scene surrounding him is similar to those of other decks in that it indicates a solitude into which the hermit is drawn for his spiritual growth. The version of the hermit is also a younger-looking individual, indicating that advanced years are not a prerequisite for enlightenment. Oh, we're learning that right uh, currently in, in our news every day. Our spiritual health seems to be easiest to ignore and neglect, and the hermit is a reminder that when we are feeling the stress of day-to-day -day living and caring for our mundane responsibilities, the only real relief comes from the time we spend away from our own little world. It is easy to think that we just don't have time for meditation, but it does not need to be a lengthy at meditation to be effective. A short break with some soothing music or a brisk walk in nature or just a few minutes silence can be enough. When we feel we don't have time, that's exactly when we need to make the time 
for meditation. When I see the hermit appear in a reading, it tells me that the querent is in need of more alone time. It tells me that the querent has become so busy with living for others that they're neglecting themselves, especially on a spiritual level. I find that the lesson of this card is learning to be alone and enjoying fully the company of oneself, looking forward to the refreshing rejuvenation that only solitude can provide. As with every piece of advice from the cards, balance is the key. So the three questions that the hermit leaves with us are as follows. How is the energy of the hermit working in your life right now? Are you finding time to meditate? When was the last time you escaped all contact with the outside world for a few hours? And when I say all contact, that means away from your phone, away from your iPad, away from any other device that might distract you. It's been a while for a lot of us, I'm afraid. How do you see the energy of the hermit assisting you in your spiritual growth? So those are all valuable questions for us to ask ourselves as we look at ourselves next to the image of the hermit. And the preceding was lifted directly from my book, Tarot for Lunch, Lessons from the Cards, available now on Amazon.com in both paperback and Kindle versions. And now, as has become our habit here on the Oracle Scroll, we'll take a little more of an in-depth look at the hermit. Now, mind you, the hermit is not an easy guy to catch up with. He is extremely stealth, let's say, uh, when he is not uh, meditating or involved in some form of introspection. He blends right in to the crowd. He blends right into society. And so he moves back and forth between those two worlds quite frequently. So, we basically have a message from him because actually getting him to sit down for an interview is virtually impossible. So his message to us, because he's interested in making sure he's understood as well, his message to us says, Greetings. I am the ninth card in the major arcana of the tarot. I am known as the Hermit. First, I suppose I should address the speculation surrounding me, so no, I'm not depressed, and no, I'm not just antisocial. I have simply learned the value of my own counsel, and I appreciate my own company. This makes it easier for me to gather information, consult my inner guidance, and come to informed conclusions without compromising my values. I thoroughly enjoy examining situations and moral questions using my knowledge and intuition. My frequent visits with solitude sharpen my vision and help me learn to trust my intuition. There are also the energies of nature and the elements which assist me in my introspection. I live with the expectation that my higher self has already assembled and accumulated the necessary knowledge and wisdom to tackle any question which may arise. I enjoy moving from fully engaged with society to solitude on a whim. A sudden departure does not mean I have grown impatient or bored, it simply means that I now have reached a point where taking time to consult with myself is necessary and recommended. It has taken me years to learn the difference in energy of my own inner voice and that of spirit directly communicating with me. I am most often depicted wearing traveling robes, climbing a narrow mountain path, holding aloft a lantern to light my way, and some older versions of the tarot show me holding an hourglass rather than the lantern. Sometimes I am depicted with birds and animals surrounding me, and owls seem to figure prominently, as they are messengers, and they represent messages from spirit. 
I am sometimes associated with the Hebrew letter Yod, which means hand, and the room Ice, which means ice, and represents stability. My astrological attribution is Virgo, which accounts for my methodical, unhurried approach to any challenge. Just as I ignore criticism aimed at my methods, so I apply that same rule and strive to allow others to cultivate their own energies to grow. We all approach things a little differently. And though I am perfectly capable of functioning in society, I have grown to appreciate the quiet. When I withdraw from the busyness of this world, it simply indicates that I've discovered a question or a challenge which requires my full attention. Please respect my privacy at these times since I have provided for my needs and had to have adapted to the quiet. Though I never invite company on my sojourns, I can tell you that some of the most profound insights come to me in dreams and visions. Over the years, I have learned first to recognize these gems, but to be guided by them. My energy encourages all to learn my method of meditation and introspection. Learning to talk to oneself and to listen for the responses from within is a big step in spiritual growth. My energy also encourages all to be ready to share that knowledge gained from listening to inner guidance. This balance is very important for the continued spiritual health and growth of the individual. Some decks have actually changed my name from the hermit to a more modern-sounding name reflecting the same strengths and challenges. Since I am more concerned with energy than with monikers, I'm not concerned with those minor adjustments. How can anyone have this same experience? Take some time to map out a quiet space of your own so that you can escape from society. This could be a physical space in nature or a special corner of a room at home or even just closing your eyes and going within while still seated at your desk or easy chair. This exercise does not require long-term planning and days or weeks to accomplish. It can be reached in minutes with minimal preparation once you have your personal formula, once you get the hang of it. I find nothing more powerful than stepping aside momentarily to connect with my higher self. I find it invigorating to call upon my higher self and what other, other, other guides I may need to consult at that time. Establishing the flow of information and energy is essential, and I am here to remind the human race that whispers can be far more powerful than screams or shouts. I am here to encourage everyone to learn the power that comes from using and relying on your intuition and inner knowing. With the confidence which comes from realizing that you already have the necessary wisdom and knowledge, navigating the pitfalls of society becomes much less challenging. Ah, but I do have a warning, and that is, remember that the purpose of introspection and solitude is to better prepare for life in society, out in the public. The peace and tranquility of withdrawing from society can become addictive to some, and they may feel disturbed and unhappy at having to return to daily life and responsibilities. My example is not to treat this introspection as a destination, but rather a refueling stop on your way to workable solutions. I would invite you to join me in a journey to the South, uh, but that would be defeating to both of us since solitude and quiet are key ingredients in this operation. So, find that place in the physical 
or make a space in your mental and emotional bodies for tapping into your in intuition. It will serve you very well. And if you see me in person, I'm going to be that person with a quiet confidence, which doesn't need to impress anyone, and seems to be in touch with what is important. If I can't be found, then I am once again using the tools Spirit has provided for my nourishment. And that is a look at the Hermit. In the second segment of Oracle Scroll today, we're going to look at compassion in our world and how do we bring more compassion to our world. I have stated here in this platform and in others that one of my heroes, for the want of a better word, in this life is the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama's message of love and compassion for fellow human beings is one that I find is something we all need to pay a lot more attention to. Even those of us who tend to think we're doing pretty darn well. So here's what I wrote re after a very recent um, card reading that turned up some information that I had almost forgotten. As we look around at the brutal way we humans treat each other, from the people you see in the grocery store, to the people you pass on the freeway, to our social media platforms, people are less inclined to show compassion and almost eager to discredit, disrespect, and even destroy those who happen to be different in some way. When it is more important to report an individual for being the wrong color for this neighborhood or having an abundance of rainbows in their front yard than it is to entertain the possibility that no crime has been committed, we have innocent people being gunned down in the streets for absolutely no reason. How might these same volatile situations have turned out differently if the reporting party had simply not sought to be the enforcer of their view and their agenda? What if, instead of su suspicion and distrust, the two parties could have acknowledged each other's right to exist, leading them to seek understanding rather than confrontation? Our newscasts are full of disturbing in images of violence against fellow human beings, and yet we still see examples of the Good Samaritan who helps repair a flat tire or jumps into a flooded ditch to save the driver who lost control on an icy road. Compassion is one of my concerns for which I am passionate. Am I perfect and completely without fault when it comes to showing compassion to my fellow man? Absolutely not. And that realization helps remind me of my job on this earth. I strive to be understanding with everyone, though there are times that my imperfection and missing the mark is full on full display. And I think we all can relate to that. We've all found ourselves there sometimes. We can each recall a time when we failed to be supportive, compassionate, especially with family members. Those closest to us seem to get the brunt. In the LGBTQ community, where suicide is rampant, especially among the youth, the question has to be, what would happen if patience and understanding were extended in place of judgment and dogma? When I was much younger and had begun questioning everything about the church I was raised to believe was the only way to salvation, I was faced with the punishment meted out for such offenses. This group employs, to this day, shunning to extort obedience from the faithful and not-so-faithful. 
As I was being expelled from this cult, I stood to lose every friend I had ever made, along with my entire family. The rules are that if any of these people so much as spoke to me, they would be expelled and shunned as well. As a young man already dealing with a broken marriage, this was a daunting realization. In a recent Lenormand card reading, the cards spoke of a couple who were quite influential in my past, and it was at that moment, oh, 38 years, 39 years, somewhere in that range, after the event, that I fully realized the risk these two friends had taken on my behalf. These wonderful people not only continued to see me socially, but they also employed me at times, even though at any moment they could have suffered the same indignity of being expelled, the same indignity that I had gone through. I had not, until that very moment, I had not fully appreciated the level of loyalty and it helped me tremendously in rebuilding my life. Some years ago, my husband and I were approached by a friend of long standing. Oh, and by the way, that's my new, my new term. I do not have old friends. I have friends of long standing. Who told us that a series of kind gestures we had extended to her and her family had helped them through an extended rough patch and kept them optimistic as to a better outcome. Neither of us quite knew what to say because we had not gone out of our way especially and we certainly were not fully aware of how we were helping, how we were being viewed. I'm sure the friends who helped me did not fully appreciate what a difference their actions and loyalty were making in my life. Sometimes it isn't elaborate plans or extravagant gifts. It's as simple as a kind word or a listening ear. We may not have the resources to solve world hunger, but we could contribute to a local food bank or offer personal assistance when we see a need in our local community. I have a meme that I share occasionally on social media which simply says, we may never know when we are someone's only light. That light could be your smile of encouragement, your comforting hand when consoling a friend, your talent for preparing food for a sick friend, or your assistance with a financial emergency. More currently, we have received an outpouring of generosity of all kinds from our community to the point where we will never be able to repay that debt. So how do we make ourselves fully available to the community? How can we begin now to show the loving compassion we long to see within our community? I have found that when I direct my attention to the needs of others, my own needs are automatically taken care of. I still have to recognize my limitations, resources, and time, and energy, and that I cannot repair society as a whole, but I can make a difference. I can make a difference right here, on my block, on my street, in my town. I ask that you help us with your own ideas for showing compassion and ask that you share those thoughts with us for future discussion. And if you wish to contribute to the Oracle Scroll in any way through comments or questions or uh, even as I mentioned here, how do you show compassion? What is your favorite way to show compassion to your neighbors? And Submit that to the Oracle Scroll at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. In our third and final segment of the Oracle Scroll, we take a question from the audience 
and draw cards to find some guidance for the individual. Sometimes, to, today's question is a, is a really uh, intense one. Sometimes they're, they're not all light and fluffy. Sometimes they are quite involved. So let's talk to Sarah. She has written in and asked us the following. My husband and I have separated temporarily, and I am curious if this is working to bring us back together, or is it pulling us further apart? And my reply is, thank you, Sarah, for your question. I drew three cards for your question, and they are the Tower, the Hierophant, and the Wheel of Fortune. So first of all, I find it very significant that you have three major arcana cards in this draw. This indicates that there's a lot of pent-up energy in the situation, and the challenges are just beginning. They are far from over. The tower is the most powerful change card in the deck, and you're already in the middle of that. You're already experiencing the explosive change of the tower. This card speaks of change on a cataclysmic level. It is not necessarily catastrophic, and it is largely up to your own guidance as to how you accept this change. Some things are being destroyed, making room for new experiences. The second card to, that we drew was the Hierophant, indicating that you may find some temporary comfort in tradition and structure, whether it's a religious structure or a social structure. It's important that you have a clear understanding of the ultimate cost of receiving such assistance. Everything has its price, and that's important for you to know, especially now. The Hierophant represents a comforting, stable presence, but there are strings attached, so be sure that whatever the cost is something you are willing to pay. The Wheel of Fortune continues that theme of massive change, though on a much calmer level than the one spoken of in the Tower, and it points to a period of fine-tuning that will follow. So, in summary, you are already experiencing the tumultuous effects of massive change, and your separation is a direct result of the need for adjustment. This part has felt beyond your control and has made you feel powerless at times. You have, no doubt, already received lots of advice from family members and friends as to what is proper and what is right in such situations, and these suggestions can be quite welcome at times. But before implementing them, be sure to calculate the full mental, emotional, and spiritual costs involved. Going forward, you will be able to make adjustments and fine-tune your changes in a way which is a lot more controlled and a lot less chaotic than what you're experiencing right now. At this point in time, it is difficult to say whether this separation is truly temporary or not. There are conflicting energies swirling around the situation and all the parties involved. Concentrate now on how the changes are affecting you. Are they freeing and liberating? And be honest about this assessment. Are they freeing and liberating, or do they cause feelings of lack and loss? The only thing you can do now is fine-tune yourself. Work on yourself so that when you are next in a relationship, whether it happens to be this relationship redesigned or a brand new relationship altogether, you will know exactly what you need and expect from it. So thank you, Sarah, for your question. I hope that our response has been helpful in some level. Thank you for joining us for episode 12 of the Oracle Scroll. We are having a great time putting these together, and we hope that you are all enjoying them as much as we are. So 
Join us next time for episode 13. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Oracle Scroll. Find us on Facebook at The Oracle Scroll. If you wish to send comments, suggestions, or requests, please address them to theoraclescroll at gmail.com. Mm-hmm.